Yeah, I'm good if we ride this one out. <laughs> sure, sure. The internet is talking about another foldable right now. We're supposed to be really excited about that new phone. This was the time I wanted to revisit the Duo 2 and talk about some philosophy on a Duo 3. I kinda hope Microsoft doesn't make an Android slate this year, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. If I were the type of tech reviewer to give out awards, the Duos would be the perpetual recipients of Most Improved This Year award. Almost a year into the Duo 2 hardware, and Microsoft continues to demonstrate a commitment to the Duos, improving performance, squashing numerous UI bugs, and delivering one of the best concepts for how Android on a tablet should work. Yes, it's still on Android 11, but what we see is a highly modified version of Android 11, up to date on security patches and Google Play system updates, and many of the improvements coming to Android 13 were born out of the work Microsoft and Samsung showcased on their tablets and foldables. So at once, this feels a little behind, but with 2020 hindsight, it's maybe better that we didn't deal with all that Android 12 clumsiness. When Samsung, OnePlus, and Google all had to pull Android 12 updates, we never had to deal with that in Duo land. There's a bleeding edge idea of tech, and there's a practical idea of bleeding edge tech. With the Duo, I'd be good skipping Android 12 entirely and just going straight to Android 13. The custom software from Microsoft was already ahead, like opening an app by sliding a notification, gestures to move apps and split screen. All that stuff has been working pretty well, even on Duo One. But the recent updates, we've seen a lot more than just security patches hundreds of megabytes of updates. If your impression on the duos were cemented in the early days of reviews, people just wildly flicking around the duo in ways that no one would ever use any other phone, then you might have missed that UI navigation is buttery smooth now. Where the cameras used to be a little on the laggy side, it's now one of the snappiest performers available. Samsung could definitely take some notes on shutter lag. And hand in hand with Google app updates, the experience for things like drag and drop is more consistent now. I mostly use Microsoft Office, so it would make sense that a Microsoft tablet would support dragging and dropping an image in a Microsoft app. But this is also functionality available in Google Apps updated to support those interactions. Android 12 L and 13 are heavily focused on bringing more advanced functionality to tablet interactions. The duos on Android 11 were decently ahead of the curve. When I say things like, this is the gold standard of Android tablet interactions, I still stand by that. I would regularly recommend Galaxy Tabs as some of the best Android tablets to buy, not because of Android, but because of DeX. So you could avoid using Android on a larger surface area. The Duo is helping change my mind on that. And we're seeing how Android 13 is baking in natively the kind of customization Microsoft had to develop on their own. But Microsoft did it two OS generations before Google. In my use, after almost a year of poking around this thing, it's one of my favorite tablets of all time. And it's a solid, if often clumsy phone. And that's what's always critical about reviewing a niche device and what's often overlooked in lazier first week embargo reviews. It should be pretty clear that the Duo was never meant to function exactly like a traditional single screen phone, but so much of the review commentary is just focused on the familiarity of how your phone currently works and how this is different. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's worse. So not to say that it's been all roses. There's still a couple little sticky spots I hope can be addressed, and I think Microsoft will. One of the most annoying gremlins is still the side panel blanking out. You swipe to the side and you should see widgets and info and news. And very regularly, when I just want a quick glance at what's going on, I get this. Not particularly helpful. And it's not so much a bug of the duo, but unexpected results in various apps that aren't quite sure what to do with the keyboard and different orientations. Android thinks it's one continuous tablet screen that defaults to opening apps half screen. Many apps still don't know what to make of that. The app is in portrait view, but the tablet is in landscape. Ah! 
couldn't help that. That was so corny. Uh, thankfully, I have rarely faced the blank screen issue. When you fold the Duo back, it turns a screen off. It should wake that screen when you open it back out. It's apparently very common for folks to be in the middle of using the Duo open and have the Duo think it's only in a single screen orientation. It has happened to me a couple times. And then you jiggle the panels and the Duo wakes back up and you're back to normal. But it's not a common occurrence in my use. I have to preface, I'm regularly using the Duo as a companion tablet to another phone. And I hated the Microsoft bumpers for the Duo 1 and Duo 2. And the most I've ever put on a Duo is just this skin. I love my little composition notebook skin on my Duo 1. Some other folks like Shane Craig over at Scary If Literal have been tracking these issues more consistently. Definitely check out his channel for more regular Duo coverage. And one factor might be how clean your hinges are and whether there's any pressure from a bumper or a case wigging out the hinge sensor. Not entirely sure what might be causing it for some users out there. With a gadget that's trying to be this smart, it's really trying to be clever, I have to reiterate, I wish Microsoft would just give us a deliberate toggle to turn screens off and on when we need them. This was a practical benefit to using the LG dual screen phones. Automatically, it works fine most of the time, but there are gonna be some times you need to turn a screen off. I do not want both screens on when I'm trying to use the camera. I don't want interactive elements on the bottom display when I'm trying to line up a shot on the top display. I would prefer to use the whole bottom panel as a more deliberate handle to steady my camera. But Microsoft won't let me do that. The Duo is very clever, but if you use one, I guarantee there will be moments where it's not really smart enough to properly figure out its own orientation. How often that happens, your mileage will vary. But I gotta tell you, Duo does it for me. I'm a dual monitor desktop kind of guy. I plug portable monitors into my laptops and I like using a second screen with my Steam Deck. I like dual glass displays for multitasking over a single larger plastic screen. The duos are used heavily around my home for that kind of multitasking. I fire up a friend's live stream while I also keep a recipe up while I'm cooking dinner. I got into the really bad habit of watching videos while also playing games. On the fly, document work, I'm managing a spreadsheet while I'm timing my benchmarks. Email and navigation. I just think in two apps at the same time. Other products are good at delivering that use, but there's nothing as natively familiar at managing a multitasking experience as dual display. But for all my fondness on the duos, I'm good if we take a year off. I understand the development process happening and why we're still on Android 11, but I'd really like to see what this team can do to incorporate Microsoft customizations into Android 13. When it comes to the hardware, we're also in a very interesting position with current SOC design. And what I think the Surface team is trying to accomplish here, I'm not sure there'd be much benefit to taking this form factor and dropping a higher performance and thirstier chip into these panels. And we've seen some encouraging improvements from Qualcomm, refreshing their current 8 Gen 1 chip, getting better power and thermal performance. I would be concerned it might still be a little too hot to deliver a better experience. When I still pick up my Dual One, there's very little by way of mobile software that makes this foldable blink. And this is a three generation old chip in the tablet, still overkill for the majority of daily interactions and higher level multitasking. When people think they need the newest chip, it's very difficult to wrangle out of them why they feel they need more compute power. The cameras on the Duo 2 are not stressing the SoC. The screens are not stressing the SoC. In several tests, the 888 can still hang with the 8 Plus Gen 1 for things like audio and video editing. I think it's okay if this is what sticks around for another year. I offered a prediction on the Duo concept in my first Duo 2 video that I hope this is a transition product. I want Microsoft to make the best tablet they can make, and I genuinely don't care if it runs Android or Windows. I'm here for a folding dual display from Microsoft's hardware team. I've been ready for it 
since the earliest Windows XP slates. I was ready for it when we saw concepts of Project Courier. I'm still super sad that we won't get a Surface Neo, but the subtle hints on what might be changing, that little glimmer of light and hope off on the horizon. Windows 11, those changes to Windows 11, like including Android app support, could be very encouraging. I believe Duo exists so Microsoft can learn more about pocketable portable hardware and how to make better mobile versions of their apps and services. Windows 10 was not ready to be used that way, so they put Android in your pocket instead. The mission has never been to make the best Android phone they could make. The mission has always been to make the best Surface they could make. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, if you're buying a portable gadget with hinges today, you're paying to be a beta tester. As long as you know that going in, you're good, go have fun. But there is nothing mainstream at all about a pocket computer with bendy parts. Now, obviously, I'm cool spending some cash to be on the bleeding edge of hardware and tablet design. I'm here for this. I would not try to pretend that this idea is ready for the same kind of daily use as a traditional slate phone and a tablet combination. Consumers will certainly benefit from this idea, especially when we can properly show advantages and cost savings over carrying multiple devices, but we're not there yet. We're pretty far from there currently. As techies, we're locked into this idea of yearly updates. We've got to stay current. But if you're not going to make more dramatic improvements to a product, maybe it's okay to sit a generation out and refine more. Honestly, the next step for any foldable, if we're to believe that this idea is maturing and can be relied on for a wider group of consumers, would be to see the mid-ranger idea of this concept. I love revisiting the LG Velvet, where a dual display phone in a case with a headphone jack and a memory card slot and higher resolution screens arrived in a shell that's still slimmer than the Z Fold 4 Naked, which is how we know that the manufacturing costs aren't just the internal specs. But this has the same processor and more RAM and storage, and it's cheaper than a Duo. Yeah, because it doesn't have hinges. Hinges make everything more expensive. But I digress. Wrapping this all up, we definitely face a challenge in tech commentary. I've been talking about this a lot. Most recently, on the Pixel 6a, where it's it's just too easy and too profitable to punch down on smaller manufacturers. YouTube rewards you for bullying smaller and niche solutions. It's easy to casually write off the Duo as an option. You pan it in a video on launch week and then you never revisit it ever again because who are you going to upset? The tens of people who bought duos? Those consumers probably aren't watching your channel anyway. This is a product that requires a nuanced conversation about compromises. Any other folding or swiveling experiment out there needs a different kind of critique and an even finer examination on the pros and cons to help folks get the right fit for their needs. Because I do not want the Z Fold style of this idea. Folding phones are the wild west right now. There are huge opportunities for other manufacturers to make something and not just copy Samsung. We're seeing some subtle differences with Oppo and Vivo and Xiaomi foldables. There's still potential in the idea of something like a dual display case from the LG catalog of innovations. And if you put a whole second screen in a case that still protects the phone, probably be about the same size or slimmer at the hinge than a standalone foldable naked. I'm just saying, there is no one objective correct way to multitask and fold, properly acknowledging the competition's strengths and weaknesses improves this category for all consumers. And it's getting real tired acting like we can only give positive reviews to the most popular products so we can make the most money on YouTube. It does a real disservice to the real world use of these experimental gadgets. But I digress again. The duos, the duos are rad. And I hope we see future iterations of this concept, new flavors of this hardware. Even if it's not running Android in the future, we know there's a practical interest in putting high-level productivity 
in your pocket. We know people are interested in this idea, and now we need to see how large that audience might be. Personally, this is what I want, a little thin notebook of compute power. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Again, I'd like to throw the shout out. If you'd like to see more regular coverage on the Duo 2, check out Scary If Literal. I think he's been doing a phenomenal job of keeping up with all of the individual updates for the Duo and Duo 2. And for my channel, Huge thank you. All of the support lately has been amazing. I can't thank you enough. Those of you who are catching links in my descriptions, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, buying a little merch, or joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.